director and head civil engineering department Walchand Institute of Technology Solapur so today i am going to discuss a numerical example on design of square footing learning outcomes at the end of this session the learners will be able to determine the area of footing then the effective and overall depth of footing and they are also able to determine the reinforcement required for a footing and they can sketch the reinforcement arrangement in footing this is a design example design a square footing for a short axially loaded column of size 300 mm by 300 mm carrying 600 kN load use m20 concrete and fe415 steel the safe bearing capacity of the soil is 180 kN per meter square sketch the details of the reinforcement solution the first step we are supposed to find out the size of footing the size of footing for that we have to consider the load on the column p is the load on the column 600 kN and the self weight of the column is usually taken 10% of the load on the column so that is 600 divided by uh, 10% of the 600 divided out to be 60 kN so total load it is 660 kN so the sbc of the soil that is safe bearing capacity of the soil is 180 kN per meter square so if we divide the total load that is 1.1 times p by sbc we get the area of footing as 3.667 meter square the size of this uh, this footing if you take root of it it is 1.91 meter by 1.91 meter so let us provide a 2 meter by 2 meter footing second step so we have to find out the reaction soil reaction uh, from the factored load now please remember while finding area of the uh, footing we have not taken the factored load we have taken given load as, as it is with a self weight of footing because the this is a serviceability condition so since it is a serviceability condition the factor for serviceability is only 1 so therefore here we have not multiplied load by 1.5 we have taken as it is so whereas when we go for design we require a factored load so for design soil reaction from the factored load we we calculate factored load 1.5 times p it is 1.5 times 600 divided by b square that is the area of the footing it is 2 meter by 2 meter we get 0.225 newton per mm square as the upward pressure now we shall we should find out the depth of footing from the depth of footing is consider uh, calculate uh, done from three consideration from the consideration of single shear the depth will be found and this particular depth will be checked for two way shear and this is also checked for bending so the critical section is at a distance d from the face of the column for as shown in figure for a single shear now this is a plan of the footing so here the critical section for the single shear is at a distance d from the face of the column now d is the effective depth of the footing and b is the breadth of the footing which is 2000 mm small b is the width of the column that is 300 mm now vu is the soil pressure from the shaded area now the shaded area is shown in figure here so this is the shaded area so total distance that is this is 2000 from that i have to 2000 minus i have to make this particular the size of the column which i have considered and then afterwards so we have to find out what is this particular shaded area so the shaded area is calculated so it is 2000 minus 300 divided by 2 minus this particular d that is the distance from the face of the column so therefore here we will we'll get q v into b that is b is the total uh, width of the footing then b minus b divided by 2 minus d so that will give you the uh, total this particular soil pressure from the shaded area it was thought to be 450 into 180 minus d so assuming 0.2% steel for m20 concrete the tau c is determined from table 19 of is 456 2000 tau c was thought to be 0.32 newton per mm square so minimum depth required is 
tau C B D is equal to V U. So, so tau C B D if we uh, equate to V U, we get minimum depth required will be equal to 351 mm. Provide a uh, effective depth of 360 mm. So therefore, so now let us check that particular depth whether it is safe or not from bending moment consideration. This is checked from bending consideration. So MU limit is 0.36 FCK B into XU limit into D minus 0.42 XU limit. So, so this is as per G.1.1 uh, C <coughs> that is maximum moment carrying capacity of the uh, footing in bending. So XU limit by D is 0.48 for FE4 and 5. So therefore MU limit was thought to be 0.138 FCK BD square. So if we substitute 0 0.138, FCK is 20, B is 2000, D square is 360 square. So it was thought to be 815.2 uh, into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm. So MU is calculated at the face of the column as shown in figure 2. Now, where will be the maximum bending moment for the footing slab? Now footing slab is nothing but a two-way cantilever. So therefore, can you tell me where will be the maximum bending moment at the footing slab? The maximum bending moment of the footing slab is at the face of the column. Here at the face of the column, it is maximum because it is a cantilever. So therefore, at the face of the column, we have a maximum bending moment. Now this is a critical section for maximum bending moment. So MU is calculated, it is moment of the forces under shaded area about xx. It is QU into B into B minus B by 2 into B minus B by 4. It is at the center of this. B minus B by 2 is this particular distance. So it is Q into B into B minus B square divided by 8. So that will give us a bending moment of 162.563 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm which is less than MU limit which we have calculated. What is MU limit we have calculated? So MU limit we have calculated is 815.2 into 10 to the power of 6. So which is greater than this particular value of 162.563. So therefore depth provided is sufficient. So now let us check for 2A shear. The critical section for 2A shear is at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column. So it is shown on the in the figure over here. Figure 3 shows critical section for 2A shear. The critical section for 2A shear is this one. So this is critical section for 2A shear. So here it is at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column here. Here also it is at a distance d by 2. So therefore the perimeter or the each side of a critical section works out to be B plus D. So this is also B plus D and this side is also B plus D. Now this particular to find out what is the uh, shear force along this particular critical section. So we have to find out the upward pressure in the shaded area for for two way uh, shear stress we have to calculate. The two way shear stress is given by upward pressure in the shaded area. So divided by area of the critical section. So area of the critical section consists of perimeter of the critical section into the depth, effective depth. So it is this is the uh, perimeter that is 4 into B plus D. So that was sort of 264540 mm. So 2640 mm into effective depth is 360. So that will give us the, this is the perimeter of the critical section into the depth, effective depth that will give us the uh, the area resisting this particular shear, uh, critical shear. So critical two way shear is the area uh, shear force in this, uh, in this shaded area. Now that we will calculate, <coughs> so 0.225 into 2000 by 2000, this is, this will give us the total downward load minus 616 to 660 that is the area of the this particular uh, uh, breadth of the inner portion so that will give us uh, the total downward load divided by this perimeter into depth that will give us the two way stress as 0.844 newton per mm square so the maximum shear stress permitted for as per two uh, with respect to is 456 2000 is 
point two four five times root f c k. So point two five times root f c k is twenty. It is one point one one eight newton per m square. Whereas we are getting point eight four four as two a share. So therefore, this is depth three sixty m m is sufficient from consideration of two a share. So now m u we have to you use uh, this particular uh, equation g point one point one b from uh, I S four five six two thousand to find out the area of steel. We equate m u to, to the this a s t into uh, b d into d into one minus a s t into f y upon b d f c k. So we equate it. We find out area of steel. It is one two nine nine mm square. Then Using 12 mm bar spacing of the bars, it is area of one bar divided by area required into 2000. It was sort of 174 mm center to center. So provide 12 mm bars at 170 mm center to center. So that is the main steel. And since it is a two s, uh, so AST provided the percent of steel provided was sort of 0.185. So tau c as from IS 456. Tau C was sort to be 0.308 newton per m square, and tau V it is V U upon B D it was sort to be 0.306, which is uh, less than the tau C max or tau C. Therefore, therefore no uh, we can provide the reinforcement. <coughs> the development length also we should check. So which is less than tau C 0.306 is less than tau C. Therefore, uh, development length. Uh, tau B D it is M M twenty concrete and F E four and five it is one point two times one point six one point nine two so L D provided it is five sixty four so this much length is available beyond the face of the column hence it is okay now this is the reinforcement arrangement this is the main steel and the perpendicular it we find the another that is also main steel because it is a two way cantilever so both are uh, 12 mm tor uh, hysd bars 170 mm center to center both way these are references used for the preparation and thank you one and all